Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as OCR VQA Visual Question Answering by Reading Text in Images. This is from researchers from Indian Institute of Science Bangalore and TCS Research. So before we move forward, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. My name is Prakar Mishra and on this channel I usually talk about interesting research papers and concepts in the space of machine learning with a major focus in NLP. So yeah, if that interests you, hang around, you'll love it. Cool, so let's move to the abstract. So they say, the problem of question answering about an image is popularly known as visual question answering or VQA in short. It is well established problem in computer vision. However, none of the VQA methods currently utilize the text present in the image. These text in images provide additional useful cues and facilitate better understanding of the visual content. So yeah, most of the open source large scale datasets that you'll find for VQA are majorly focused around doing question answering from image based on the objects that are there in that image. It was not about the text that's written, which is what this research targets and says like, if there's a text written, can we do question answering about that text as well? So as a part of this paper, they introduce a novel task of visual question answering by reading text in images, which is basically based out of OCR. They not only introduce a novel task and the pipeline of solving it, but also a large scale data set that has roughly 200,000 images of book covers that made it possible. So yeah, so as you can see in the figure one, let's say if this is one of the book covers that was given to the system. And the question that you now ask is, what is the title of this book? So the answer comes out to be Vermont Beautiful. So this kind of becomes an extractive way of question answering, right? Because it's already mentioned somewhere in the image, as well as the question that targets answering the author name. But the method also works in the situation where you're doing some kind of abstractive question answering. For example, if you say, what type of book is this? It says travel. So nowhere directly it's written travel. But if we see the image, let me zoom it a bit. It looks like a road, right? So from here, the model might have gotten the cue of saying we are talking something around travel. So yeah, now with this, we get an idea like this is an amalgamation or an ensemble of the textual content as well as the picture features that are present in that book cover snippet. So with this, let's move forward and see the exact method and the data preparation pipeline. So as we saw, right, they also propose a novel data set that has roughly 200,000 images for doing this OCR based VQA. So they named their data set as OCR VQA 200K. And the first stage of them preparing this data set is about obtaining the images. So they choose book covers across 32 genres as the sample images on which the next task was to obtain questions and ground truth answers. So they start with some template based questions around title, author, year, genre and all of this. And once you have certain set of templates ready, such as what is the title of this book? Is this book related to religion and all sort of things? The next task was to extrapolate this to have this data set at a larger scale, to which they apply the paraphrasing technique, which is around rewriting the same piece of content that comes to as an input to a model M in a way that preserves the semantic meaning, but switches the syntax here and there. So for example, if the input is, what is the title of this book? A paraphrased version of this question could be, to please tell me what the title of this book is. So this is a paraphrased version of that question. But the ground truth that we associate with this question still holds with the paraphrased question because the semantic meaning is still the same. So they did paraphrasing using human annotators based on a certain template. But the other way around of this could be like, seeing the progress of how the models have performed, especially the transformers in the NLP space. You could now easily go about training your T5 model that does your paraphrasing or your BART model or any kind of a sequence sequence model should be good to go in this case. So once you have your large scale question and its relevant answer, the last stage was to just split it into train test and validation split. So yeah, so they found certain challenges also in their data set to what they created. And the first one was the different kind of layouts that any book cover would come in. So since there's no specific template that every author would follow while designing his book cover, so the layout understanding is a kind of a challenge. And also the fonts and styles in which the text is written, it was a challenge to find a good OCR engine that could read all of them in all their variations and orientations. So the second one what they state is challenges for VQA community. So here they discuss the general challenges which are not usually they're in traditional VQA datasets, which is mostly on the side of doing abstractive way of question answering, let's say identifying book category based on the book cover. 
and then also the quality of paraphrasing that people usually generate that would add to the diversity of the questions that we're trying to ask. So if you see this image, we'll talk about the selection of image and question from truth pairs. So if you see the question, let's say, is this book related to cooking? So this is a yes and no kind of question that the model is expected to answer. And clearly we can see image of a glass, words written such as cocktails, beer, tap, and all of that. So all of these are the things that the model has to capture and say, okay, this looks like something related to cooking. Whereas if you see again, like, is this an exam preparation book? Clearly we can see like some sort of a sports going on, the words that talk about running. So in a generic sense, this doesn't look like something that you should be preparing in an exam. But here again, you can argue and say, what if this was a sports exam and, and this is one of the proscribed book. So this becomes, it's a part of the curriculum, right? So yeah, considering all those cases are not there. Uh, a generic question answering is what we're expecting so so in that sense the answer no holds true whereas in the extractive sense if i ask which year's calendar is this it says 2016 oh sorry so i think it okay it was a calendar so probably if i would have asked is this an exam preparation calendar uh, then i'm not sure what it would have answered but probably the answer is no because of two reasons one is because of the activity shown which is not primarily in a conventional sense an exam preparation kind of a thing but again the word calendar could also make it toss over there so yeah not sure about it whereas if you see the last one that says the bhagavad gita and if the question is who wrote this book clearly it's an extractive answer so it extracts the relevant text that's written in the book cover but herein if you do an abstractive question and say is this a religious book the actual answer is yes and this is what we expect the model to answer by relating this yes to the religious word and also to the kind of dressing and the ambiance that's presented on the book cover should kind of hint the model to get to this answer so yeah that's the complexity is what we're talking about so let's go into the exact method to what they propose so we use question and the entire image for figuring out the feature vector so the question is passed through a bias tm to get a 300 dimension representation that holds a semantic sense of what we are asking so that is what you see as a part of this orange color and then the book cover what we have so the first thing that we do on this book cover is to detect the blocks wherever the text is written so in this paper, they mentioned like they scope it down to just putting an upper cap of five text blocks that they consider while doing the question answering. And in case they have more than five text blocks, then they sort it based on the area that the text blocks cover, which is from higher to lowest, and they pick the top five over there. And, and in case the total number of boxes that are there on the book cover is less than five, then they still spawn some demi vectors to maintain the overall feature vector length. Once the text blocks are identified, they do the OCR for these blocks to get the text that's written as a part of those blocks. And then they perform NER tagging, which again kind of identifies if we have person name or year, if that is found or not found kind of a thing. And then they do NER tagging on top of it. So we'll see to what NER tagging would exactly use as part of feature vector. But yeah, so 300 dimension comes from BILSTM. The entire image is passed through VG16 and you get a 4096 dimension vector that holds a semantic meaning of the entire image. Then from the OCR text that they have done over the all five text blocks, they concatenate that text, do an average vector representation using word to vec which gives them a 300 dimension vector is what they again concatenate. Now the last feature vector, which is 35 dimension, what you see, which is dark blue color, comes from what they call as block embedding. So the vector that represents a block is of length 7 and 7 into 5 becomes 35. So that's what you see as 35. So let's talk about what those 7 values are. So the first one is the index, which is whether it's block number 1, block number 2, block 3, block 4, block or 5. Then the next 4 are basically xy coordinates of the top left and xy coordinates of bottom right, bounding box. And the last two bits are around the NER stuff. So they use spacey over the OCR text for every text block to identify person and year. So they convert this into the numeric form and have a two dimensional representation. When the first value of that is if neither a person name nor year is found, then you put zero at that place. If person name or year is found, you put it as one. And the second dimension to that NER tag is basically on the addition side. So if they found the book edition mentioned somewhere, the addition number is put 
otherwise if it's missing you put zero over there so this along with the positional features along with the index features makes a length of seven for each block and since we are considering five blocks so a total length of 35 so now this is the entire vector that we have which is 35 plus 300 plus 4096 plus 300 again and all of this now goes to a feed forward neural network that has a softmax output spread across 51 dimensions which means 51 kind of things is what we can predict and these 51s are nothing but book edition book genres yes and no block indexes year and all of this so all this kind of sums to 51 and for any given question understanding what kind of a question it is something from this will be one hot so yeah that's it for this paper so if this paper got you interested in VQA, I am planning to create a series around a couple of papers that do document based question answering based on whatever text is written over there. So make sure to subscribe and look out for those series. Also share it across the friends to whosoever you think might be interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.